Hello. And it's Saturday. Yeah. It's definitely not still Wednesday. <laughs> and it's Match Week 23 of Dead Air Specialists. And we've officially sort of caught up. Yep. Because it's just the midweek ones that are happening, or like just finishing now that we need to do. But we haven't got the highlights on YouTube for them ones yet, so we can't do it. So um, if you've enjoyed six episodes back to back... Fucking, we'll start forgetting to do them all the time, <laughs> <laughs> or we'll just. Uh, I don't think anyone's enjoyed this. It's you been a th- third episode. It's like nearly, nearly half past nine. It's a long time, but um, if you don't know the score by now, <laughs> it's a pun. <laughs> then go back and watch our videos. We go through every ten games on the match week as long as everyone plays. We go through them and we talk about them and we say stuff, and it's like match of the day, but we're not biased. Yes. And we don't have Ian Wright on it yet, but that's, you know, that's that's cool. <coughs> we'll start off with the Saturday games with your beloved, uh, oh shit, Tottenham Hotspur. Yes, my Tottenham. Yeah, Tottenham Hotspur versus Watford ended 0-0 at Vicarage Road. Um, what have you got to say about this one, Nikos? <laughs> uh, shame for Spurs not to get uh, three points and a goal out of this game. Uh, great save from Gaza. On the penalty from Troy Deeney as well, which... Didn't have his cojones. <laughs> pretty good. Um, but yeah, main talking point of this game for me is VAR. Or not VAR, but... Goal, goal line technology. technology. Well, something we haven't heard from in a while. Yeah, I mean, end of the game. I think it was pretty much towards the end of the game. But strike from Spurs. Goal pretty much over the line. Just a fraction of the ball still on the line and goal disallowed. So, a bit disappointing being a Spurs fan and having something like that happen. But because it was literally not. like a fraction still on the line. I always thought it was 50%. Yeah, I always thought it was over. like a certain percentage as well, but maybe it's something that's changed. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But again, this isn't something that us Spurs fans haven't witnessed before because we had the good old, I believe it was Pedro Mendes goal that was um, tipped out by Carroll. At United, yeah. and um, that was a blatant goal. But obviously, back then we had no technology or anything like that. But that never stood. And again, nil nil. I mean, I'll take a point, but I would have preferred a better result than that. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. It's how football goes, and it's how <laughs> things are. So no, um, yeah, um, another because Harry Kane's out until the end of April. Yeah, possibly the end of the season as well now, mm. depending on how surgery... Yeah, how surgery goes, but you know, he, he, he was, he's always back in time to play us, so don't worry about it. Yes. But Vertonghen was captain and gave away the penalty um, handball in an awkward position. Yeah. I mean, there was a few handballs this week, really, weren't there? Yeah, handball here, handball there. One person thought he was playing volleyball. That was me. Is it? No. This is, who was it? It was uh, Bournemouth, wasn't it? Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, nil-nil, you'll kind of have to take that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's what it is. I mean, Spurs are just Spurs. They might come back in the next week, but we'll have to wait and see what happens in that future. Hmm. Moving on from my beloved to your beloved. Oh, is it Arsenal versus Sheffield United? It is indeed. Oh, Arsenal fucking drop the charger in. One, Sheffield United, one. It's out. So, go from um, Martinelli. Oh, man. Good goal. Gabby, he's a great guy. He seems to be, like, doing pretty well for you guys, so... Oh, yeah, I definitely cannot wait to talk about him in match week 24. I'm happy for the bloke, and if he's... For an 18-year-old to score... Well, in that, that one was his ninth. Yeah. But to score... Um, Ten goals now for Arsenal already. I mean, that's great for him, great yeah. for Yult, and great for the future of Arsenal. But um, yeah, um, first game without Aubameyang, he was obviously suspended. Three games following his straight red at Crystal Palace. Yeah. Yep. So um, I think we did miss him in front of goal, but also again, our shoddy rate. We've uh, deflected goals, came back to bite us again. So. Um, We'll, we'll um, better performance, not the best performance, but um, still a better performance and better fight. Just unfortunate to be, keep getting these draws. Really, I want to yeah. be getting some free points up there because we've been struggling with that. And hopefully, we, we can finish mid top half and uh, build from the summer and go again next season. 
That is zero Which is a shame to be saying with, uh, what is it, like 15 games left? Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if my math was good on that one, but there we go. Um, but nothing really of note. Martinelli's like a bright spark and um, Fleck really good getting the equaliser. Um, much, uh, I think this one was a better game, even though it was still 1-all. Yep. Brighton won, Aston Villa won at uh, the Annex. What do we uh, think about uh, this one? I mean, it was a 50-50 game pretty much. I mean, both teams had their chances and they both took one each towards the scoreline, so ended a 1-1 draw. Mm -hmm. Um, Grealish again scoring, doing pretty well, getting himself up there and getting goals for his team if needed. And um, he'll be in demand in the summer, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll be very surprised if he doesn't join another club and it'll be interesting to see if he does and how he performs there. And we also had a goal from uh, Trossard for Brighton to have it as a 1-1 and one point each for both teams. So Great goal from Trossard. Really well taken goal. Grealish, great individual displays from them too. Uh, apart from that, not much to shout about probably for both teams, but, um, you know, one point's better than no points. Yeah, 100%. But just, uh, just uh, we'll have to wait and see what effect that has going forward, or um, if it's going to put any damage on Aston Villa staying up. Yes. Um, surprising result for the reigning champions, Man City. Two all at Palace. Shame. Shame to finish as a two all uh, draw, but Aguero getting his two hundred and fiftieth Man City goal and then his two hundred and fifty first Man City goal, so. Again, like the previous week, he broke a record last week. This week he's got a personal achievement for the club. So yeah, again, he's breaking playing. records, hat tricks one week, and then yeah. he's. I he's think playing. he's scored. I think he's what? So he's something like twenty-five goals behind, uh, like Shearer and Rooney, like something like That's that. Not bad in terms of you know. Goal scoring prowess. I think he's. I don't Doing know well, whether then. he's ahead of or behind a Thierry Henry in terms of Premier League goals. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but like prolific goal scorer. Um. Uh. And Crystal Palace with ten men still managing to get the point as well. Yeah, I mean Crystal Palace. You had Tosan score in the thirty ninth minute, and then obviously City fought back with Aguero's goals in the eighty second and eighty seventh, and then. Fernandinho own goal in the 90th minute, which costed them the three yeah. points in that game. Which will be unfortunate for City um, to be having an own goal, make, not giving them the W on this occasion. Yep. But, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Norwich 1-0 against Bournemouth. Bournemouth, three defeats on the bounce. Yeah. Is Eddie Howe in trouble? Potentially. I mean... A team that are in the battle for relegation. Obviously, last week we see them lose to Watford. Yeah, and before that, West Ham 4-0. Before that, yeah. So, so, so they're in so eight goals in three games. The problem they're doing at the moment, Bournemouth, is they're losing against the teams that they don't want to be losing against. Like mm-hmm. They want to be beating these teams. They're like Norwich... They're down in the relegation area. Yeah. Obviously, Watford, they're down there. West Ham, they're not too far off it. I think they're only a couple of places up. Mm-hmm. So these pl- these teams, they should be beating or at least getting a point out of and preventing them being yeah. chucked further you'd, down. You'd expect them to get at least six points out yeah. of those three games, but they've got none, which I mean, is shocking. It was Cook who gave away a penalty for Pookie to put away mm-hmm. by... Becoming the goalkeeper. Yeah. Even though he's a defender. Um, blatant handball and straight red card. Great decision from the ref. Um, so that balanced out the team for pretty much most of the game. Mm-hmm. But then obviously Norwich did lose a man as well in the 76th minute. But Brighton just didn't look like they wanted to wake up and try and salvage a point out of the game. So Norwich managed to get three points out of that and boost themselves. Potentially up the table. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't, yeah, Norwich sort of 
Away making a last ditch attempt to try and get out of the relegation. Well, not last ditch. They've got a few games left, but yeah, they but are pushing themselves out of it, which is pretty good. Pretty very nice, isn't it? Uh, but, um, pretty high scoring game of this week. Southampton two, Wolves three. Yeah, Wolves back to uh, winning ways. Really, Could they lose? They lost to. Uh, did they lose last week? They... We've recorded so many of these. I don't know what. Finish 1-1 and previous Finish 1-0 and then I think they lost the pre- one before that, didn't they? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. So, um, the, uh, winning ways against Southampton. Uh, did Danny Ings score? Because <laughs> he normally does. He didn't in this didn't game. Didn't in this. That's why, that's why Southampton didn't win. Because <laughs> there was no Danny Ings. So we had a goal from Bednarik from Southampton. Mm-hmm. And a goal from Shane Long, which put Southampton two goals ahead. Mm-hmm. And then coming into the second half, you had Neto score in the 53rd minute, Real Jimenez scoring 65th minute from the spot, and then again scoring in the 76th minute to give Wolves the three points in that game. And a good turnaround. Um, and Triari with two assists again. Mm. Neto played really well. well. Yeah, Neto played good as well. Triari as always. Yeah, you Triari is always a player that some teams possibly fear him, would you say? I mean, you've got this guy who's built like a brick, running at you like we said previously. Oh, God, I'd go, I'd go flying. <laughs> it's just, I mean, watching the highlights of that game, I'm not sure what Southampton player it was, but he was pretty much on top of, like, Triore, like, battling for the ball and that. And I was thinking, there's, there's no yeah, chance. You're brave. Yeah, I mean, I mean at least... going to, like, pick you up and throw you to another country. <laughs> Literally, like, he he's such an asset down that right-hand side. Yeah. Because he's great going forward, he's great defensively, he can, he can handle himself in the final third as, and deliver a main crossing as well. So, um, really great player, really been impressive in this season. Would be surprised if he's not in my team of the season. Yeah. But, um, well, great result for Wolves. They um, push themselves up a bit higher up the table, which is always nice because they're really hovering around that Europa League place. Yeah, I mean, they're in, obviously, I don't know if they're still in it. I think they are. Day, but obviously they Having a good campaign or had. As far as I know, they're in the knockouts as yeah, well. Yeah, so, I mean, if they're still in the knockouts and they're having, they're having a good campaign on their first time in Europe, potentially for a long time or first time ever, I'm not too sure. Um, so if they can get back-to-back Europe, then that'll be pretty good for them. I mean, a club of their stature. And if they're playing clubs that are, like, great clubs from other countries and pushing themselves further through... It's something to build on, and you never know, they could be one of the ones in the future to be pushing into Champions League football. It'd be nice, they'd be like a new Leicester. Yeah. Talking about Leicester. No, sorry. Mm. <laughs> mm, yes, indeedy. <laughs> West Ham continuing their life under David Moyes, so, what was it? It's a battle of the new managers, this one, wasn't it? Yeah, um, Ancelotti versus David Moyes, but not as you'd expect them. Um, <laughs> West Ham one, Everton one. Jesus. Uh, who took the lead? Was it West Ham? It was West Ham, yes. Diop scored in the 40th minute. And then a Calvert, Dominic Calvert Lewin is proven to be Ancelotti's lucky charm. Yep. Scoring the equaliser and um, pretty um, decent fight back from Everton. They did look a bit sort of cagey coming out for the first half hour, I'd say. Yeah. Stats pretty even. Both had pretty pretty much the same amount of shots on goal, just West Ham were on target more than Everton in that game, but mm-hmm. it didn't prove to be anything other than just a stat in that area, because they both obviously took a point out from that game and finished 1-1, mm-hmm. so not too bad. Moving on to the next game, Frank Lampard, more troubles do you reckon? It's happened again. <laughs> Newcastle won, Chelsea nil. That's so out of what was it you were saying? They uh... so over the last three games they drew one, lost one, won one. So they drew in match week twenty one. Yeah, they won in match week twenty two, and then obviously match week twenty three they have lost to Newcastle. And the three before that, I know there was a couple of losses in there. I think something like that. Lampard getting a bit like we said, gets a bit shaky, but then that's the um the nature of the length of you know, a Premier League campaign. Yeah. It's hard to keep it up twenty four seven. 
Yeah. Um, but Liverpool are doing all right so far. Hopefully they don't be nice if down the back end uh, they actually do slip up. But um, it's, un- it's not like people still have... I know I get the thing because Roy Keane went over it with the uh, Man United game that like Lampard's lost like eight games and like not been doing well these last six, arguably. Like, I know one of them he won, but still they've not been playing as well as they had at the beginning. Yeah. But people have still got faith in him, whereas with Oli, you know, they haven't. But yeah. it's because they like he is building something like from the ground up because Chelsea have never been one for promoting youth and playing well and playing a different style and, you know, not spending all... I think it's just because Bramovich doesn't want to spend all of his money anymore. Yeah. Which is the main thing, and that sort of was helped by the transfer ban, which they're now out of. But... um. You know, it's a long road for a new manager who had only previously managed Derby. And he's, let's be honest, he's doing a great job. And if anyone's going to turn that club around, it's Frank Lampard. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, it was a great goal in the last minutes of the game from um, Hayden. Mm-hmm. Great assist from St. Maximan as well. So, I mean, it was a shame that Chelsea had gone the whole 90 minutes plus without conceding. And they did put on a bit of pressure and stuff, but mm-hmm. just losing your three points or potential point in the last minutes of the game there's nothing you can do about it it's no. pretty much done and dusted as soon as that's gone in that is yeah you know your club's gonna just literally drop morale for the last what minute or two whatever you've got so a shame but that's the way the cookie crumbles as you said do 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 do. <laughs> hey moving on to no one's mo- watched match week 20 yet that's really annoying how dare they no damn it Moving on to the last two games on Super Sunday. We, but the thing is with the league, you win, you lose one game, you could win the next. It's so up and down. We don't know. They so. could, they could beat Arsenal, <laughs> but you know by now that they didn't. So we will start with uh, the Burnley two, Leicester one. Oh, Burnley getting a result against Leicester. That's a big upset. That is a big upset, especially considering the results that Burnley have had over previous weeks. I mean. And that's lost. just the ones we recorded today. Yeah, so last week they lost, I believe. I think they lost the last two. Yes, yeah, so the last week they lost 3-0. And the week before that they lost 2-1. So, I mean, to come off of those two previous games of a loss, to then go on to beat Leicester, who are potentially up there, Champions League football. Title contenders, title realistically, contenders, yeah. the way they've been so, playing this season. I mean, to beat Leicester 2-1, great result for the boys at Burnley. Uh, just unfortunate for Leicester to not like get themselves a point out of it and, if not more, mm-hmm. build themselves into still fighting in that area of possibly catching or whatever with Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And um, Vardy missed a penalty. Yeah. Um, which is shocking for him because I think he's got a pretty good conversion rate for penalties. Yeah, I mean, it was a good save from Pope, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, like I said to you previous... I'm surprised he's not potentially England's main keeper. Yeah. Because, I mean, Pickford is an alright keeper, but he does have his mistakes. I mean, any keeper has a mistake, but someone like Pope, who's playing pretty good for um, Burnley at times, obviously previous weeks we've had bad results, I would give him a chance as being England's main goalie just oh yeah he's been happens. yeah there's one thing Burnley know how to do well it's keepers yeah you mean like Heat and Pope yeah like to name it because uh, Heaton's where now he's gone he went somewhere else didn't he yeah I'm not too sure he did move on though and obviously they had like Joe Hart and stuff like that but uh, for, you know they, they're not bad with a keeper especially him so um, keep your eyes on poor P. Um, is this oh, the last game the main the, the main event one. The main event, yeah. The uh, big Manchester United and Liverpool little rivalry. The biggest rivalry in English football, I think. So Liverpool won this game 2-0. At um, Anfield. Pretty good result for Liverpool, you'd say, still, even though they're obviously the team to beat so far this season. But to and beat United, rivals. Yeah. But United like aren't the United of old. and no. But Man United did, as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, they did better than when Mourinho... Took United there last season, which you know means nothing because they lost both times. But they were they were defending a lot better. They were a lot more organised. Liverpool weren't getting as much space, but Liverpool didn't look like they were trying because you know they Liverpool can turn it on and just go up another gear. Yeah, like City can, and it is ridiculous. But you know, it was quite. It looked for a good like 
hour or so, it was like, this is going to stay quite cagey. And the 1 0 was, um, was, it looked like a sort of fairer thing. Or, but also, United had chances to yeah. equalise plenty, but then a 60 odd yard um, assist from Allison to leave Mo Salah running like against no Man United defence to then yeah. slot the ball away to finish the game off, I think, last knockings when it was about. Just near the 90th minute, yeah, something it was like that. Yeah, pretty much 90 plus four. Uh, 90 plus three, sorry. So it was pretty much the last minute of the game. Yeah. United, very unfortunate to, you know, not get a draw out of it. But, you know, they've not been the team that they used to be. And they just couldn't really sort of get anything going in the final third. I think the main problem was their transition from um, defence to attack. Because there was not really... There's no one in midfield. You know, that's why you kind of need a Pogba. To be picking the passes and like breaking down the lines and slotting the ball into your wingers or like trying to find your target man up top, which they don't really have. Yeah. Especially that Rashford's injured at the moment, so that's not probably not helping their cause, is it? Nope. But that is, you know, that's just that's football at the moment. Um, Jamie Carragher was quite happy. Yeah. I mean, he just gets pleased easily. That guy, doesn't he? Mo Salah, you beautiful little dancer. But um, they're surely done, dusted. I reckon so. I mean, it, like, especially like, with City drawing and yeah. Leicester losing, it's another. It's what like thirteen points. Yeah. And they realistically need like to win the next ten games, then they've won it. But yeah, I think they'll, I think they'll win it before then. Yeah, I mean, I reckon. What have we got? We're match week twenty three now, so we've got fifteen left. Yeah. They would definitely have won it with five games to go, I think. Yeah. But I reckon they'll probably grab it within the next seven. Oh, yeah, very possible. But we'll we'll see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but we can only hope. And... Well, no, I hope that they win it early, because then they'll just, like, lapse in concentration, because they'll be yeah. too busy celebrating. But, yes, um, there's not really much, because, like we said, there's not... What else can you say about Liverpool apart from... Like it's outstanding just how much they move as a team when one player isn't having the greatest of games. Yeah. There's another ten on the pitch that are. Whenever someone gets caught out of position, there's automatically a position filled by someone else who's dropping in to help. And the same going forward, it's just, you know, they're working as a real unit and fair play to Klopp for doing that. And um, it looks like he's basically on the verge. I don't get how, you know, they say that, you know, they're not thinking about the end of the season. Surely there must be something in their mind saying, like, yeah, we 100%. are. Like, you'd be out there going, like, we just keep winning games. We must. This must be our year. Yeah. I mean, if they don't win it now... It'll like be the biggest season, up, it'll, it'll be the biggest be, upset in yeah. football history, I think. Because they've um, just literally dominated the whole From league. start to finish. Yeah. So. Um, shall we do the table and then our player of the week? We shall. So we will start from 20th position as always. Um, down into 20th, we have Norwich on 17 points. Bournemouth in 19th on 20 points. Aston Villa in 18th on 22. You've got Watford in 17th and West Ham in 16th on 23 points. Brighton have dropped down to 15th on 25. Burnley gone up to 14th on 27 points. Southampton dropped down to 13th on 28 points. Newcastle have gone up to 12th. Everton on 11th. And Arsenal in 10th. Yay! On 29 points. Crystal Palace still sitting in 9th place on 30 points. Spurs are still 8th with 31. Sheffield United have dropped down to 7th with 33 points. Uh, Wolves have gone up to 6th position with 34, with United just above them on goal difference in 5th. Uh, Chelsea, 4th place on 39 points. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Leicester, 3 points behind City in 3rd with 45. Man City, 48 points in 2nd. And running away, Liverpool with oh, 15. 64 points. So that's 15. Is it 15? I can't count. They 16. Are 16 points ahead. 16 points clear with a game in hand. The game in hand being played next Wednesday against West Ham. So potentially 19 points clear. Yeah. Top. That's ridiculous. That is crazy. 
I think if one, I think after that West Ham game, when it's all like everyone on the same thing, if they're 19 points clear, then yeah. surely it's done. But you know, we'll have to wait for that and see where. I mean, can... the, the logic in that is you pretty much need Liverpool to lose the next six, six to seven games. And City to win their next six to seven games for anything to be like to sway, yeah. Whatever. And I doubt that's going to happen. No. It's not going to be something that's going to be seen. Or if it does, then like you said, it's going to be one of the biggest upsets in football history. And I would love to experience something like that because that would just be great. No, oh, definitely. <laughs> Player of the week next. Who are we going to go for? I mean, I'm not too sure who I'm going to chuck in there. This I'm week. I'm torn between two, um, Jack Grealish and uh, Trossard. Both in that same game, they played extremely well. <coughs> great side of performances, great goals, great young players. Like obviously one Belgian, one English that are doing, putting in great. Before. They've played consistently this season, and I think in recent weeks have sort of stepped up a gear and been putting more performances that make you think actually like. Ugh. They've been playing really well. Yeah. And sort of for the, at that age to be playing at a high consistent level in the Premier League, I think is amazing. So for me, that's that's my split. I think I'm going to chuck mine towards um, a player who I believe is having a great season so far this year. Uh, I'm going to give it to Raul Jimenez. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's been playing great football. Got himself a couple of goals this week. And just the link-up play you're seeing between him and um, Trio is just, like, mm-hmm. good football. And, I mean, that's pretty much all I can say. He's, yeah. he's, he's getting himself in that area, getting himself to get goals, and he's probably the main guy that I focused on this week. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty fair. That is that. So that's that, and we've officially sort of caught up. Um, so, sorry for the delay and the six episodes in one big chunk, but we're all done now, so uh, we'll hopefully try and keep on top of it better, because we've got yes. the opportunity to, because there's no games this weekend. No. And it's Boo Matt Boo to end it. Yeah, boo, hashtag Boo Matt Boo. Everybody um, get it trending where, on Twitter. Where, you, where can you find us on Twitter? I hear, where can you find us in general? I hear <laughs> you ask. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Facebook at Pasty Sheep. Uh, follow, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a share. Subscribe, obviously, to the channel if you're new. Give, give us a spread the word to your friends who might like this kind of crap if you haven't already. Because the more we need our analytics up so we can do more things, and you know, maybe one day we can make money, but I doubt we ever will. It's nice to have a hobby, yes. Also, link in the description for to donate to Nikos's fundraiser as he runs the London Marathon. In just over three months' time. Yes, I'm pretty sure I have about 13 weeks now. So it is literally fast approaching. So we'll have the link down there. He'll also be, if you find him on his various social medias, he'll be posting about it more in the coming weeks yes. as he gears up to reach his target and try and finish it like a pro. And hopefully we'll be recording that and hopefully you'll see faces on that. But, yes, you know... Man. Until the next time, it's been, I would say a pleasure, but it's quarter to ten, and we've been here for a while. We have. Thank you for your help, Nikos, as always, and back to usual business next week. So see you guys next time.